All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we are comparing two varieties of figs to each other. And I think this is really going to put to bed that I believe these two varieties are the same. One is called Noir de Boulogne, and that's the true name of this fig. And the other name that was somehow misnamed or mislabeled when it was brought to the United States is called Barnasot. And Barnasot, just a little history, by the way, on both of these figs. Barnasot is a variety that the USDA imported somewhere from France. The origin is pretty much unclear. I've also never, by the way, heard of a fig called Barnasot. Um, if you ask anyone in France, no one's ever heard of a fig called Barnasot. By the way, also, if Hatib de Argentile is probably in a very sim similar category. No one's ever heard of a fig called Hatib de Argentile. So I don't know where these figs come from. I don't know, um, even, I don't even think the USDA knows. People claim, have told me that the USDA knows where all these things come from. But uh, again, um, I don't see any proof or any of the evidence of that. To me, this is just, I think, some kind of mistake. And so now I'm growing actually the two of them side by side because both of them in their own right seemed like to be amazing figs. Barnasote was, from the USDA, uh, actually really riddled with fig mosaic virus, not doing well. I think it didn't get a whole lot of attention. People originally claimed it was Borgesote Noir instead of uh, Barnasote. They compared the two, definitely not Borgesote Noir. Um, Boulogne never really made its way into the United States under the name Boulogne, or at least it took a long time. And Bode is really the grower in France that loves it and propagates it and finally it made its way into the United States and finally I was able to acquire it myself, taste it, grow it. This year we got some really good tasting notes on it, really good figs from it. By far and away it's one of my better figs, especially in terms of texture and eating experience. It is incredible. It is exquisite and it used to be called the queen of figs in France before the Col de Dames came along. So this is a fig with a lot of history, a lot of information about Boulogne. But for some reason, you got this random fig called Barnasot that really almost no growers in the United States even grow or even respect to any degree, except for a grower named Brent. Shout out to Brent. He's, I think, in Maryland and he's a commercial grower. And this is one of the varieties he actually grows. To me, uh, after seeing him grow this and respect it and say positive things about it, I thought, wow, this is a really nice fig. I got to try it myself. I got to grow it. Here we are. Somehow down the road, I think these two varieties, I acquired them at similar times and now we're able to actually compare them. We have them ripe side by side here and we're able to actually, I think, put this one to bed. Now there's a defining characteristic that actually, shout out to Nadia, Nadia Habib, I think her name is, in France. She actually knows a distinct characteristic of Malone, which is that it gets this green coloration here. And believe it or not, this is actually Barnasot, and this uh, is Noir de Malone. So the Barnasot figs have that green coloration that I've seen, by the way, myself, first person, seen it on many of the varieties or many of the figs that have ripened so far of Barnasot. Here it is there on the bottom of Boulogne. Uh, I mean, I've seen it, by the way, repeatedly on a lot of the Boulogne figs. They don't all get that, which is, I think, true even, you know, like looking at this one, I don't see a ton of it. Maybe there it is right there, but uh, that's typically what happens. It gets this similar coloration that you see here it has a similar size. Uh, and then of course, with that coloration, um, it ends up turning a little bit green there. Um, so regardless, I think this, this fig is rather interesting. I know I'm kind of repeating myself there guys, but let me cut them open. Let me just see what the inside is. Okay. So this is fermented and pollinated. And that's why I believe it looks like that. So we're going to have a difference there in the color. Look at the difference in the color of the uh, pulp because of that potential pollination. 
But the others here look very, very similar. These are real nice figs. So I, you know, I almost really wanted them to actually be different. I didn't want them to be the same. Um, some other characteristics you'll note about the figs and the, the, the two varieties here, I should say, uh, is that they first off have variable shapes to the fruits. Um, so it's not a consistent shape. Some of them get really weird, but overall they're typically more oval shape. Um, I would say almost pyriform. Uh, they seem to do really well in the rain. They don't seem to really split that much. Uh, and uh, the leaf pattern is, exact, is almost exactly the same. There's also a little bit of fig mosaic virus there in the leaf pattern. Um, it's a strong grower, vigorous. I would say thicker branching to it. Um, and in general, uh, has incredible good tasting figs. So here's actually a barnisoat down here that I injected with pollen and water. And that water is typically turning the, the inside of the figs amber and actually making them not taste very good um, for most of them. We did get a little bit of good pollination and if that water stays in the fig for too long, that's typically what ends up happening. Um, but in any case, here is the comparison of the red ones. To me, the pulp looks very, very similar. All right. And for the final test, here's Noir de Boulogne. What I'm expecting is an exquisite, very thick, dense texture. Um, mild berry flavor. It's more of a sugar fig. Fruity, good sweetness. Very thick and dense. Compared here to the Barna Soap. This is very good. In fact, this one's more ripe and almost slightly fermented. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of fermentation in there. But that's exceptional. And the more ripe this fig gets, the better it is. But even underripe, as this one is definitely less ripe than the others, it's really nice. So I'm not really tasting a difference. The only real difference here, I think, is in the ripeness. Maybe you could argue this, this Barna Soat has more, a little more berry flavor to it. It's very good. So I don't know. Maybe there's actually an edge there in the Barna Soat, but um, to me, I think they're both very, very similar figs. I would argue uh, you probably don't need both, but you should have at least one. It's that good. So anyway, guys, there it is. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Uh, hit the like button and check out some of the other videos we've been doing now on the blog. Take care.